we went to Lagos. We wanted to apply for the Schengen visa. That's the visa that gives you access to the whole of most of Europe. <laughs> so we went there. We did the application. And because we are traveling people, we are missionaries, our passports cannot stay in an embassy for too long. If it stays more than four days, we'll apply to you and say, you give us our passport back, thank you. We are no longer interested in your visa. So we gave them, we did the application. And for more than four days, we did not have a response. So we wrote them back and said, oh, we are sorry. Please just send in our passports. Next time, when we have the time, we can uh, come and apply again. So they said we should come to the collection office at 4 p.m. in the evening. So we arrived there a few minutes after three, so that we'll be on time, and they gave us a place to sit. So while we sat, we began to watch people that were applying for visas. And there was this guy. He was on the line. And he came. His turn came for him to do the application, feel the thing. It was time for him to pay. I don't know what happened to his ATM card. The thing was not producing money. He said, all right, let him go and withdraw the money cash. And that's a, an option, a viable option. He ran out. And then when he put the ATM card in the ATM machine, the ATM machine swallowed the card. He came again. He had borrowed some money from some people. He came. And then he went there. And when the guy at the counter counted the, the money, he discovered it was not, it was not complete. It was 11,000 naira short. The, uh, see, at this time, at this time, his, the boy he brought, his son, his son had entered the director's office, had entered the accountant's office, he had entered. <laughs> he left the application. He ran after his son and arrested him and put him back. And when he came back, his, his reality, as in <coughs> he's been 11,000 a rash shot, was still, I, was still with him. So when I saw the way he was suffering, I, I asked Philip, I said, Philip, take my ATM card. Go and pay for the guy's application. Let it be that he will share a testimony that God sent somebody to interface with him. So Philip took my ATM card. He rushed there. And by the, the moment Philip arrived at the desk, the man at the desk said, I don't close up. The man on the counter told him, we have seen this type of thing before, that he should go and organize like 22 days of dry fasting. That, they've, they've had people like that that have come, that he's a spiritual, he's from home, he's from his village, that they have refused him from. Do you, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Do you know someone that came into the place talking with suit and tie, but by the time it was four o'clock, the thing was out. And even though a Samaritan was there to pay for you, it, 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 that goodwill did not translate to anything. You know what? It was a smell. This smell can be a smell of favor. This smell can be a smell of reproach. And the moment people see you, they lock up completely. And you cannot explain it. This is the reason. You know when we counsel people around heartbreaks, relationships that went bad and all of that, I found a few of them that the reason why the relationship went bad was not the girl's fault, was not the guy's fault. It was just because one of the members of the relationship had a smell of reproach. I've seen that smell of reproach open closed doors on all kinds. So if you are in this hall or you are under the sound of my voice and the story of your life in the area of relationships has been closed doors, broken relationships, all kinds of stuff 
even opportunities, employment, and things like that. You can be very qualified. Even the people on the panel, they testify that you are more qualified than the rest of the people that came in search of the job and give you good points, raise your hopes, and then you walk out of the place hoping that you have a phone call, an email, a text message, and you wait on end without a response. Then you will realize that the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. Are you there? There's something beyond the perfect presentation that you made that is still forestalling the entry into the opportunity that was advertised. I sent Philip, I said, Philip, you know what? Let us stop the dilemma of this young man because I asked him, asked him a few questions and he lied to me. He lied to me and I picked it, I knew. It, that's the easiest thing. If you have the gift of word of knowledge, one of the easiest things you can detect is if someone is lying. So he lied to me and the fact that he lied to me did not stop my heart that was open for him. I had two questions that I would have asked him and I would have confronted him with the fact that he was lying. But there was no need for that. The reason why I even spoke was because I just wanted to tell him that we are involved now. Okay? So take my car. When they got to the table, man said, unfortunately, one second ago, my desk, it closed. Those guys were there from 9 a.m. in the morning. I came to bail him out at 4 o'clock. And my goodwill did not translate to any miracle. ATM card was swallowed. All kinds of things happened in one day. The people in the place, they, we've seen this. Thing. Don't worry, don't worry. What you need is 22 days of dry, very, very dry fast. You can help secure the message of the Lord to bring salvation to the situation. That was how we were told of someone that came from Abuja down to Lagos. And while he was trying to file the application, he now realized that he left his passport at home. So they, they told you, no, don't worry. See, we've seen people like you before. What you need is a very long fasting. <laughs> My son smells like a field that the law has blessed. It's just like a vulcanizer. It's putting air into your tire. Then he puts it to a, a, a certain point. Then he takes there some things that they use to gauge it. Then he puts it on it to gauge it. The guy was prophesying. Blessing upon this guy was prophesying. And he didn't stop prophesying until he could smell. The smell was the gauge that could reveal that ah, the utterances have reached the realm of the spirit. If you have that negative smell here, it will be broken before the end of this service. Yeah. And those that are watching online, if you carry that, that smell of reproach in the realm of the spirit, oh my God. Tonight we come to wage war against the speaking of altars so that the Lord himself will arise and blot out every tongue that is speaking over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Psalms. Psalm 1 verse 1. Psalm 1 verse 1. So in Psalm 1 verse 1 it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And this is the scripture I'd like us to analyze. And he shall be, I hope you, are you with me? So he's just saying that this man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, this man that does not stand in the way of sinners, this man that does not sit in the seat of the scornful, this man whose delight is in the law of the Lord his God. These are the symptoms 
of the speakings of blessings. So if blessings are speaking over your life, you are going to find these symptoms on your life. So the opposite of the things you will see here are the kind of things that you will see if something negative is what is responsible for the speaking. Is that clear? It shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. It shall be like a tree that is in the midst of supply. The first symptom is that it will bring forth its fruit in its season. It will bring forth its fruit in its season. Please underline in its season. In its season. Yes, productivity is a sign. Fruitfulness is a sign that blessings are speaking over your life. But stay with me. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. The productivity and the blessings is going to be, is going to be consistent with your season. I need to say something quickly. I need to say something quickly. Um, we labored in this ministry, for instance, for 14 years before we had the breakthrough. Because it will bring forth fruit in your season. Pineapple tree, purple tree is different from mango. Mango is different from cocoa. It took us 14 years before we entered into the realm of abundance, where it became very evident that God has given us much more than enough. Now, so, one of the things the devil does, even if there is a blessing on your life, there is a season for it to begin to speak. So what the devil does is that he comes to manipulate you to think that it is it's becoming too long. And the thing about priesthood is this, the moment you stop putting wood on that altar, the moment you stop doing the things, for instance, that brought you into lamplight, you have made an agreement with the devil that you want to go downside. A lot of people's commitment have been cut off because they felt that they have labored for so long that they, are not, they have not seen results. The first thing I need to ask you, the area of your labor, is it the, did God lead you there? If God led you there and you are doing the labor the way God prescribed, you know I told you the formula for prosperity is God's man in God's place doing God's work in God's way and as God's time will not lack God's support. So when I feel that it's as if we're, I'm laboring and there, there's no results to show I check. Did I call myself or God called me? Okay, he called me. Is this what he asked me to do? I check my books again. Yes, this is what he asked me to do. Is this the way he asked me to do it? I check my encounters with yes, this is the way he asked me to do it then it means that in God's time, I will see God's support. Your work with God is a work of faith. But I'm telling you now that our own due season as a ministry was 14 years. That means we are in a covenant cycle with God that runs for 14 years. In the next 14 years, after the first 14 years, are you there? break again into a major dimension. Especially if we don't stop doing the things that God has called us to do. So I just wanted to add that balance. He will bring forth fruit in the season. Is that clear? His leaves also shall not wither. I checked wither in the Hebrew. And the word I found is fade. He will not fade. I hope you know how it looks like when you fade in ministry. It's not everybody whose voice you don't hear that died. A lot of people are still alive. But many of them have faded. Many of them are alive as though they are not alive. 
And the Bible is saying, as long as a blessing is hanging over your head, you will not fade. I was expecting you to say amen to that. I said, you will not fade. One of the very clear symptoms of the fact that someone is laboring under destructive utterances in the spirit realm is that it begins to fade. It begins to fade. The Bible calls the glory that is available in the New Testament on the basis of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as a glory that excels. You see, in the Old Testament, the glory that Moses had that came upon his face when he went to commune with God for 40 days and 40 nights, that glory that, that was upon his face that the children of Israel could not look steadfastly at his face was a glory that was fading away. Right, so the glory that in, was in the Old Testament, if, if there was glory at all, it's a glory that is fading away. God is not committed to supporting and sustaining that glory because he has a better plan for the manifestation of his glory, which is a New Testament system. And so the New Testament system is a glory system that excels. Oh my God. And this is not influenced by old age. This is not. You understand what I'm talking about? The glory excels. So it is counter, it's counter, counter to the New Testament provision for a man's life to begin to fade. You should excel in glory. That means the way we see you today, we know that you will not have a better yesterday. That your tomorrow will be better than today and next tomorrow will be better than tomorrow. It is a glory that excels. It's a glory that excels. I remember those days, you know, I've always been a very loud preacher, especially in my family. I wouldn't want, there were people in my family that were bent on mocking anyone that was a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you decide that that is your assignment, your calling, I will ensure that if I'm present there, what I will say will not make you go home with victory. But you know what? A time came when there was no need for me to talk. The glory had excelled. I, I tried it once, to the glory of God anyway. Are you there? And I said this with, with no pride, with no pride. I clicked our surname on Google. It was my name that came out. So there was no need to talk again. There was no need. The, the critics, they faded away. All, all, that, hey, this preacher man, huh? he is the greatest ambassador of the entire clan. The glory excels. He excels. The people that were trying to make us feel funny for for being followers of Jesus Christ, today they are hiding their faces. Because the glory excels. If you give God time, he will walk on your life. He will manifest you with the brightest colors. Oh my God. Oh, it will excel. It will excel. It will excel. It will excel. One day they say someone was sick in the family and they sent me a message. Somebody is sick that if it is true that I have this power, why is it that I will not come and heal the person? I said, oh, the people I pray for, they are in church. If you are so desperate for healing for, for this, our brother, bring him to church. That's where I operate. You have taken him to shrines to see people, even the ones on the mountain. You took him there. What? It means you have the grace to take, to move. Move in, the, in our direction. Come here. Come. But the priest does not go that way. You bring the afflicted. You have moved to how many native doctors? The situation grew worse. It's obvious you don't have a mobility problem. No, you don't have it. You, you were in strange places. And instead of the matter improving, it grew worse. Why do you think now that this priest will leave his own altar and bring the services to your doorpost when you know how to move? 
Hallelujah. So when I said that, they are still looking at their pride and measuring it, whether they can accommodate that in, the, in their pride. Oh my God. If that pride is still there, you don't need me. When you die to it, then you come back. When I say Jesus is Lord, you say, Amen. Amen. It's a glory that excels. Not a glory that fades away. His leaves also shall not wither. Imagine on my wedding day, someone came and said, Ah, if I had told him, he wouldn't have allowed me to come all this way to marry here. I kept quiet. You are talking because you have a mouth, not because you have what to say. But if I re reply him like that, you say, eh, even we came for your wedding, you did not even... I kept quiet. I kept quiet. Many years have passed. Even they themselves are saying, ah, you have the best home. Because we've not come to your home to settle any quarrel. You, know? you see, human beings are designed to talk. You know this thing? The name is called mouth. It talks. And most times it talks more evil than good. So don't take it seriously. There's a glory that excels that even talkatives will withdraw their statements. There's a glory that excels. It's a risk to fade away. Because when you fade, you become an object of talk. In, in, in syndicates, in biting sessions, in ah! But when you excel, the backbiters become mute. God will make you excel. Amen. So his leaves also shall not wither. You saw somebody that was rising like a light. Then after a time, you look for him. You cannot find him. And he did not die. Something was speaking. That thing that was speaking is what began to manifest. And just in case you have this rise and fall syndrome in your life, those symptoms are around you. This night, this night, this night, as we call upon the Lord, he will blot out the tongue of the Egyptian sea. The tongue that has been speaking will be blotted out in the name of Jesus Christ.